here from Key Neat Creations. This is video two about image masks. In the first video, it was just a very basic introduction to how to do an image mask. In this video, I'm going to just do a few more examples and um, one which has sort of a layered look and just to take it up a notch. So this first picture, I have no idea what I would use this for, but it's kind of a cool idea to use the magnifying glass zooming in on the leaves. So how to get this look, very simple image mask. So my basic um, uh, elements, I have this background image, I have this magnifying glass, and then I created a few uh, elements to put on the very top to give it that glass that glass look. So for starters, I need to create a clipping mask so that my tree image or my leaves are only inside of the magnifying glass. And so I need to go and create a shape. And in this case, very simple because it's a circle. I'm gonna make that a color there so I can see it. I'm gonna drag it out. Okay, we want it to be the size of our magnifying glass. Uh, if you hold down the shift key when you drag, it will keep it in perfect circle dimensions. Just, oops. This is where the perfectionist thing comes in. Okay, well, good enough for this tutorial. So I have my shape selected, and here I have my other image. It's the same exact picture, so I'm going to make sure my photo is selected. Come hold down the command and click the shape so that the shape is also selected and I'm going to go to format image mask with selection you can also click this icon it will do the same thing and then I'm going to bring my tree into the circle view however I want the tree to be zoomed in so that the leaves are nice and big for my magnifying glass so I'm going to zoom out so I have lots of room to zoom, Let's see if that's big enough. That should be good. So I want to kind of move it where I have like a pretty set of leaves here. Oh, that's nice. Leave it like that. When I'm ready, I'm going to click done. And that is it. Now I want to drag my magnifying glass over my tree. So if I just do that, it comes out. So I'm going to select the image mask and the magnifying glass and just to make my life easier I'm going to group them so that from now on when I drag them it comes together. So I'm going to kind of put my magnifying glass and you can see that you can tell what it is but it definitely will look better with these extra elements added. So I am going to lock this so it doesn't move around. And then I want to make sure, whoa, make sure these elements are in the front, which they, looks like they are. Oh, all right. So I'm going to drag this guy kind of right like that. And all this is, this uh, image that I'm doing right now, all this is is a clear circle with a white border that I've uh, reduced the opacity a little bit. Okay, it's not perfect. Then I'm going to drag in a little bit. Oops, see that? It's in this one. Okay, I'm going to drag in just sort of these little, you know, glass looking things. And for whatever my project is, if I had something specific, I would take the time to, you know, fix and make it all look a little more um, uniform like this one. The next image I want to make is, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a Valentine card or. A, who knows why you would need to make something like this. But I wanted to show a couple of techniques and that is how to incorporate some different textures. And you ha there are plenty of texture images, but being able to put them into specific shapes uh, helps to make things very interesting. So I'm going to go to my slide here where I have all of my elements. Okay, so I've got these, this cute couple, this uh, pretty glitter, a darker wood texture, and then I already have my background and all of that set up. 
So I want to make hearts. So I'm going to start with the background heart. Okay, so it's the largest heart. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab that shape, which I believe is these symbols. And I'm just going to, now if you drag, it should stay, that's about, that's good. So I'm going to move this out of my way. What I want this heart to be is glitter. So I'm going to select my glitter picture. I'm going to hold down command and click my heart. Going to click the clipping mask icon, drag it into place, and I think I increase it a little bit. It looks a little more like glitter. And then I think I have it darker. All right, and when I have it where I want it, I click done. I'm going to lock that so that it doesn't move around with my next uh, task, which is to make this wood. Uh, wood textured heart in, behind, uh, in front of the glitter. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to drag out another heart. I want it to be, I don't want it to be perfectly on, on top. Oops. A little. All right. So I want my wood to be in the heart. So I'm going to select them both, hit my clipping mask. Oops, and drag to where I want it, and done. Now, I decided I wanted, if you look here, my wood has a slight green tint to it to kind of coordinate with these leaves. Over here, it's a little bit too gray. So what I just did was I duplicated, uh, well, I did it in the other one before I made the clipping mask, so now let me. I made another heart and I gave it this green color and then I just reduced the opacity. So you can still see the wood grain, but it's got just a little bit of an olive tint to it. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of that, lock it all, so it doesn't move around. Last thing is my photo. So I'm gonna grab another heart, place my, draw my heart out so that it's the right size. Ooh, that's too big. Okay. Then I'm going to select my heart. At the same time, select my photo, clipping mask, drag it into place. Aren't they adorable? Let's make that a little bigger. And then done. And there you go. So just another example of how simple and easy image masks can be and helps you to be able to incorporate a lot of different elements, textures, and interest into whatever project you're working on. I hope that was helpful. See you next time.